1996 Nissan Maxima 3.0 V6 with a P0505 trouble code memory. We are testing the idle air control motor. It is a six wire idle air control motor. The connectors right here. We have four T pins installed in the control circuits. The two red wires are feed. The other four are ground side switched by the computer. We're gonna test these control circuits and see what they look like. Are we using the snap on Varus? We're using all four channels. We're going to look at all four control circuits. You want to be very careful that these T pins do not cross each other or touch each other. Very important on any computer controlled circuit that, that if you're using T pins that you're not touching anything else but the wire you're, you're testing. Okay, we're looking at all four channels again on the Varus. And what we want to do is we want the computer to extend and retract this motor. And the way that we're having this done, because we don't have bi-directional controls, is we're just gonna cycle the key on and off. When you cycle the key, the computer's gonna extend and retract the motor in preparation for startup. So we should have all four channels being active, and that's what we want to see here. So go ahead and, go ahead and cycle the key. Do it again, a couple more times. All right, that's good. I'm gonna pause it. And we're gonna go back and take a look at that. So we're just looking at where, where this thing was being turned on and off. And you can see it there. And these are ground side switched circuits. We we're talking about that in class. This information's in my book. Six wire Nissan idle air control motor, stepper motor design. Uh, for further information, definitely check us out, rosedeltech.org, or check out my book for further info on this. Uh, but in this case, you see in this channel uh, four, that's this red trace, that there's no activity on this channel. And it's a flat line zero volts. What we know about this de device being ground side switched is when it's off, we should have 12 volts. And when it's on, we should have low volts near zero. And you're not seeing that activity here. So our options are either um, an open in the coil, a short to ground on the control circuit, or a shorted driver, and I'm gonna show you guys how to address that. You guys see with the other channels, uh, they look a little bit different from each other, but um, on would be the low portion, the spike, there's actually a spike that's occurring from the collapse of a magnetic field, and you're not seeing the spike because of the channel settings I'm on. I'm only on a 20 volt scale. Uh, to see the height of that spike, uh, you would wanna to change to maybe a 50 or 100 volt scale. That's not our concern here, our concern is this red trace that there's no activity on it. And you can see that each of the other channels is functional except for this red trace. No activity. So again, short to ground on the control wire which would pull your voltage low all the time. Open in the coil would be another option for this or a shorted driver. So of those three that I mentioned, short to ground on the control wire, shorted driver, or open coil, two of them would have current flow. Short to ground on the control wire, shorted driver would have current on this circuit. An open coil would not. So what we're gonna do now to make that determination on direction and which way we're going, is we're gonna use a test light connected to battery positive, and we're gonna to touch on this channel four, and we're gonna take and the result of the test light, if, our, if my test light is lit here, then we know we have current flow and we have a shorted circuit. If the test light's not lit, then we have an open coil. That's the test we're gonna do. Okay, what I wanna show you real quick, just to make sure you guys understand what we're doing, having zero volts on one of the control wires. There's a picture in my book that we use for uh, demonstration on a six wire Nissan stepper type idle wear control motor. What we have is an external feed that's shared on both halves, You've got four coils, four control wires, you have each one of these being a control wire. And what we have is activity on three of the four circuits, and we have zero volt flat line on this one. Let's call it that one. So with zero volts, what you would have, knowing that your feed is good, because a, a bad feed could give you zero volts too, but being that these feeds are shared, uh, there's no real concern that we have a broken power feed here. 
our concern would be that our control wire, this wire right here that goes from the auto air control to the computer is sorted to ground, which would make it on all the time, or the driver itself is sorted to ground where we have current flow all the time, which would give us zero volts. That's what we have. We're measured right here and we have zero volts. So we either have these two or we have an open in the idle air control coil. And what I want to show you guys is how to address that. Again, I said we're going to use a test light, so the result's going to look like this. We already have this T-pin right here. We're going to take a test light, we're going to connect it to battery positive. If this test light lights, what's our problem? Our problem would be a sort to ground in the control or a sorted driver. If the test light does not light, our problem is an open in the coil. Okay? So let's say, hypothetically, the test light lights in this. How do you address these two? Is it sort to ground here or is it a sorted computer? All you would have to do is disconnect the computer. If you disconnect the computer and that light is still lit, you have a sorted control wire. You should probably have the auto air control unplugged too. IAC unplugged, test lights lit, unplug the computer, test light stays lit, sort to ground, test light goes out, sorted driver. That's how you would address that. We're going to do this test. We're going to check it again with the test light to battery positive. Positive. Same go. button. All right, I got my test light connected to battery positive. See when I touch the ground, my test light's going to light. If you remember from our example, our red trace was the one that didn't have any activity, so I'm just gonna touch on that T-pin. And I am right now, my test light is not lit. My key is still on. We're reading zero volts on this red trace. My test light is not lit, therefore this is not a sort to ground in this circuit. What we have is an open in the idle air control coil on that red channel. Last thing we want to do before we put an idle air control motor in this is make sure that the driver in the computer is still functional and that our control circuit has no opens. We didn't address an open circuit. All we did was address a short. So what we want to do now, same test, cycle the key on and off Knowing it's ground side switched, my test light should flicker on and off as we cycle the key. So let's do that same test I'm going to touch on here. And can I get somebody to cycle the key for me, please? Go ahead, keep doing it. All right, so how is the control circuit in the computer, the fact that this test light is flickering on and off, How's my control wire? No opens, right? And how's my driver? It's good, we can be confident just putting an idle air control motor in this vehicle. That's it, Nissan Maxima, six wire stepper type IAC with a PO505 trouble code in memory. You follow the manufacturer flow chart on this vehicle, you're gonna get in trouble. It's a horrible flow chart. All they have you do is disconnect the computer, disconnect the solenoid, and measure for uh, resistance for the coils, I'm sorry, resistance for open circuits between the computer and IEC, and that's it. It's a horrible flow chart. You need to understand power ground side switching, and you need to understand how to use a scope and use a test light, that's where we're at. No, no question, open coil. One of the four coils is open on the idle air control motor. Computer's fine, wiring's fine, we're done.